Many have wanted to compare him to Donald Trump, but poor old Donald Trump wishes he looked like Silvio Berlusconi. We could say that Berlusconi started from nothing and conquered absolute power like almost no one else in history. He not only conquered political power in Italy, he also amassed business power and media power. If power corrupts, absolute power corrupts absolutely. And Berlusconi's life has many shadows, but also many highlights. To begin with, there is something that we have to recognize about this man, and it is something that frankly is enviable. His energy. Think about it. Berlusconi died on the 12th of June at the age of 86. He was an old man. Well, last year, he appeared on TikTok with this video. Ciao ragazzi, eccomi qua. Vi do il benvenuto sul mio canale ufficiale di TikTok. We're not going to go into what he's actually saying in the message of this video, but what I want to emphasize here is that the man you just saw was an 85-year-old man when this recording was made, when he was running again in an election, in which he had a real chance of winning. I don't know about you, but I wish I could reach the age of 85 with that kind of energy. That said, are we going to praise Berlusconi in this video? Of course, no. To speak of Berlusconi is to speak of corruption, tailor-made laws, and a political legacy that is mediocre, to say the least. We could say that a good number of the problems that Italy suffers from, and there are not just a few of them, are his fault. I suppose that most of the obituaries you read out there will also mention Berlusconi's many sex scandals and his bunga bunga parties. Eh? We're going to leave all that aside because we're going to focus on two things, the political and business profile of this man. And believe me, these two aspects alone would be enough to make a movie. In fact, there is already a Berlusconi biopic and it is a masterpiece, Lauro by Paolo Sorrentino. Highly recommended. For better or worse, Berlusconi has defined what Italy is today. But not only that, he also brought about a revolution in the media throughout much of Europe. That said, why does everyone know Berlusconi's name? What is his political legacy? Why do we say he has been revolutionary in the business world? Today, we're going to answer all of these questions. But first, let's look at some history. The first difference between Berlusconi and Donald Trump is their birth. While Trump was born into a family that was already immensely wealthy, Berlusconi was born into a middle-class family in Milan. Normal parents, normal education, and a normal life. However, Berlusconi had something special. He was fascinated by show business and was the best salesman you could find. In fact, Berlusconi's beginnings were as a singer. That's right. Berlusconi started his career as a crooner who entertained parties on cruise ships and the like. Not surprisingly, that also launched his fame as a heartthrob. But as we said, we're not going to focus on anyone's sex life because we are a serious channel. No sex at all? Fine. The fact is that by entertaining the beautiful people of Milan by night, Berlusconi made the contracts to start his first big business project, Milano Du, a mega project of 4,000 homes that was an economic success. But make no mistake, what Berlusconi was really interested in was the not the real estate market, but the media. In fact, in these early years of his career, we have to recognize one thing. He was a visionary, and we're about to find out exactly how. the godfather of private TV. If you are watching this video from outside Europe, you might be surprised, but there was a time when private TV channels were banned in most of Europe. And no, we're not just talking about Eastern Europe here. In the 1970s, television in Italy and other countries like Spain was a state-owned monopoly. That is, if you turned on the TV, you only had the channels of RAI, that is, the Italian State-Owned Television Corporation. To give you an idea, in 1973, the Italian government issued a decree prohibiting any attempt to set up a private television station. In fact, they not only had a monopoly on television, but also on on television advertising, and that was a very, very lucrative business. Berlusconi was perfectly aware of this, and therefore, his goal was to end this monopoly in order to have his own national television network. The question is, how do you do it? Well, pay attention, because this is a story worthy of a visual politic video. The first question we have to ask ourselves is, why was TV a monopoly? Well, because of the radio spectrum. At that time, there was no digital television, let alone the internet. Television was broadcast by radio frequency, and the radio spectrum is limited. In other words, there are not infinite frequencies for anyone who wants to broadcast TV. However, around that time, a new technology for broadcasting television emerged. Cable's now. Cable's cool. Cable TV offered enough space to broadcast multiple TV channels. So what's the problem? Well, not all homes in Italy were ready to receive it, except for the Mahomes of Milano Du, that is. <laughs> 
Exactly. Berlusconi arranged for his 4,000 home development to have cable TV. After a long legal battle, the Italian Constitutional Court allowed the creation of a private TV stations broadcasting on cable, as long as they did so only at the local level. Well, Berlusconi had 4,000 households that could become viewers of his own television content. And that is how Tele Milano was born, a television station that was super local. It was basically a neighborhood television station. Of course, Tele Milano was not the only television broadcasting on cable, local TV that is, but it was one of the most popular because it had 4,000 captive viewers. But wait, because this is only the beginning. Two years later in 1976, the Constitutional Court ruled again on the TV issue. This time, they allowed private TV stations to broadcast by radio frequency as long as they were only local. That is, you could have a TV channel in Milan or Torino or Rome, but not a channel broadcasting nationally. So what do you think Berlusconi did at this point? Well, good old Silvio was dedicated to buying up all of the local TV channels in all of the regions of Italy. In a few years, he got hold of Roma TV, Video Veneto, Tele Torino. Basically, he managed to get a hold of all the private TV stations in the country. He united them into Italy's first media group. In 1981, all these local TV stations changed their logos to Canale 5. And that is how Berlusconi achieved what has seemed impossible, to end a state monopoly. Now he could compete head to head with the RAI empire. Thanks to having national TV network, Canale 5 could sign the most popular public TV presenters and pundits. This is how the famous Mike Bongiorno left the state-owned corporation for his new and brand new private television company. The strategy could not have been more aggressive. Berlusconi wanted to storm the market and for that, he spared no expense. He bought the most popular series in the United States and even introduced Japanese anime into Italian homes. To give you an idea, between between 1980 and 1981 alone, Canale 5 went from a turnover of 13 billion lira to more than 75 billion lira. By 1987, Berlusconi's TV network already had a 48% share of screen time in the whole country. In case you were not yet astonished, remember that only 15 years earlier, private television stations in Italy were not allowed by law. And this feat we have to give Berlusconi credit for. But if you thought that his business career stops here, you are very wrong. After conquering Italy, Silvio went on to conquer Europe and boy, oh boy, did he conquer Europe. Thus was born the Mediaset Group, a company that remains today under the name of Media for Europe, one of the largest media groups in Europe. Basically, this man was dedicated to buying shares in many of the private television stations that were beginning to emerge in other countries around him. And this is where we come to Spain. Until 1989, private television was also banned in Spain. But in the 1990s, the government put an end to the state monopoly. And then there was Silvio, also known as Il Cavaliere, ready to enter with Telethinko. And here we come to the darkest part of Berlusconi's business career, debt. You don't build such a media empire in just over 10 years without borrowing money from half of the world. By 1994, Finnevest, which is the financial arm of Silvio's empire, was the second most indebted company in all of Italy. So at that point, what do you think he did? What's the next step when you become lord and master of the media? Well, you pack up your things and you leave the company. That's right. In 1994, Berlusconi gave up all his leadership positions. However, he kept all the shares in his empire. Keep this fact in mind because it is going to be important for the next phase of the story. But where did Berlusconi go? Well, we're going to find out right now. The Political Conquest Italian politics is really crazy. It doesn't matter at which point in time you're hearing this, it applies to any period in history. In this country, prime ministers last on average 2.5 years. If you study Italian politics, you will find conspiracies carried out by secret lodges, state terrorism, and of course, mafias of all types. It was only one constant, Christian democracy. We are talking about a center-right political party that dominated the country throughout the Cold War era. However, in 1994, Christian democracy was dissolved due to a spiral of corruption scandals worthy of a banana republic. The right was orphaned and the left was not convincing voters. But where there are people willing to buy, there is someone willing to sell. And who knows how to sell better than anyone else? Exactly, Silvio Berlusconi. During the 1980s, he had publicly supported the Socialist Party. But now he knew that if he wanted to win elections, he had to switch sides. And that's how he created his own centre-right party. Although the truth is, we could say that it was a party without ideology. Basically, the process went like this. What do Italians like more than pizza and women? Soccer. And what do Italians shout when they support their national team? Forza Italia. Great. Well, we already have the name of the party. We're all done here. We can go for an early lunch. Wait, what do you mean? Ideology? Well, we're, we're for the good and we're against the bad. <laughs> Come on. But who wouldn't vote for such a party? That's how, in 1994, the year of the World Cup, Berlusconi created 
Forza Italia. I don't need to tell you that Berlusconi won the elections that very same year. And why might you ask? Well, for three reasons. First, he had control of the biggest television station in the country. And believe me, that helps. Second, the rest of the parties were killing each other in internal disputes. And thirdly, we are talking about one of the most charismatic personalities ever known. So this is how the most impressive political career in Italian history began. That does not mean that Silvio has always won the elections. Remember that Italian politics is chaos, even for him. He has been prime minister in different interrupted periods. Now, we can say that Berlusconi has been the politician who has governed Italy for the longest period of time in recent history. And we can also say that he has been the prime minister with the most powerful because he not only controlled politics, but also the media. To give you an idea, according to estimates by The Economist, in 2001, he came to control 91% of the screen share of Italian TV. Think of it this way. He was the owner of Canale 5, and at the same time, he dominated state television. Conclusion? The man who ended the TV monopoly in the 1980s ended up building another monopoly. Where have we heard that before? And this is where we come to the darkest part of his life. Because if power corrupts, absolute power corrupts absolutely. And Berlusconi turned parliament into his own backyard. Plain and simple, he passed laws that were tailor-made for just him. For example, in 2004, Italy passed a law to give financial aid for the purchase of digital TV decoders. And who had the main company that sold these devices? Exactly, Berlusconi's family. And this is just one example in a very long list. Tax amnesties, financial regulations. We could say that Silvio changed Italy to make it fit his interests. But now, Let's get to the most important thing of all, the general picture. What political outcome does Berlusconi leave behind? Apart from corruption, has he been good for the Italians? Well, let's take a look at that now. Power for power's sake. Italy's economy is, to put it bluntly, even worse than its political class, and it makes no difference when you are hearing this. Actually, Italy had a very good period in the 1980s. That is, when Berlusconi was building his business empire, the country was on fire. In the early 1990s, the Italians were richer than the British and were close to catching up with the Germans. Now, however, Italy is in Europe's intensive care unit, one of the few countries that is now poorer than it was 20 years ago. And why, you might ask? We have a couple of videos where we explain it in detail, one from Visual Politic and one from our sister channel, Visual Economic. I'll leave the link in the description below. But Here's a brief summary. Italy has systemic problems that make it almost impossible for it to function. It has a huge and totally inefficient state with more than 3 million civil servants and a lot of public spending. But that's not all. One of Italy's great weaknesses is the most absurd bureaucracy you can imagine. For example, almost all the professions are governed by regulatory colleges. That means if you want to work as a journalist or as a computer scientist, you need a license. And getting that license is a process that seems to be from another era. Well, with all these problems, Italy in the 1980s grew thanks to one thing. They were addicted to devaluation. Italy devalued its currency to make its products cheaper on the international market. During the 1980s and the 1990s, Made in Italy was sweeping Europe. In the 2000s, China joined the World Trade Organization and Italy joined the Euro. Conclusion? They could not compete with the even cheaper prices of Chinese companies. And they could not devalue their currency either. It began a long crisis from which they have yet to emerge. However, Silvio Berlusconi only wanted to win elections. So his political proposal? For the good and against the bad, right? I mean, what do Italians want? To maintain the illusion that there are no problems, that nothing needs to be reformed, and that things will be fine. Maintain public spending while the economy sinks? That is what Berlusconi has always promised and what Berlusconi has achieved. So what's the flip side of this policy? Well, you see, Right now, Italy ranks seventh in the world in debt to GDP and fifth in debt per capita. In fact, today, Italy is one of the biggest headaches in all of Europe. And in a way, a good part of that is due to what Berlusconi did, or rather, did not do, despite having more power than almost any other politician. And what has Berlusconi done in recent years? Well, the truth is that he has never abandoned politics. As we saw at the beginning of this video, even at the age of 84, he continued to run for election. However, we can hardly find any interesting political positions, except for this one. Silvio Berlusconi, XPM, defends Russian war on eve of Italian election. Exactly. Berlusconi has been supporting Russia in the Ukrainian war. And why, you might ask? Well, his argument was based on the fact that he knew Vladimir Putin personally, and they were very good friends. In this case, it seems like Berlusconi's private life does affect his political positions, or so it appears from photos like 
this one. Conclusion? So no one can deny that Berlusconi was a true genius, a self-made man. He managed to have more power than almost any other man in history. He combined economic, political, and media power in the same person. However, he used all that power in a mediocre way to say the least. And now the questions are over to you. Will we ever see a new leader with as much power centered in one man as Berlusconi? Are there other international leaders we could compare him with? And would you like to reach 80 something years of age with as much energy as Silvio? You can leave me your answers in the comments below. As always, don't forget that here on Visual Politic, we release new videos every single week. So subscribe to this channel and hit the little bell button down there so you don't miss any of our updates. If you like this video, like it so we know. All the best, I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time.